talk about some writing stuff I've been thinking about. Well, sort of between writing and television, which ties into the whole intertextuality thing. Oh my god, what do I know? Okay, I love RuPaul's Drag Race. I am one of those, like, okay, between bisexual and lesbian, like, post Roe versus Wade being repealed, uh, pretty much full to the L, and I'm not that interested in anyway, so enough about me. But I love gay culture still, even if I'm not doing anyone. Uh, oh, that's why I think I'm just, yeah. Um, anyway, folks, right. What I wanted to talk about was world building and how as a writer, when I first started writing and I first started reading the most, it existed mostly in fantasy books and sci-fi where you were building a completely separate world but with its own rules. And in children's YA books, YA books are like this too. YA books that have like, um, you know, a magical world where magical things happen. I'm thinking Chronicles of Narnia. There's a lot, plenty of lesser known ones, but that I read when I was a kid. And how nowadays that's kind of changed. And it's tied in for me personally to my own, um, both writing practice and social media practice and just larger kind of way of existing in the world is because it goes from, or it's gone from totally just the writer is a separate entity, sometimes with a pen name, to what I'm doing and what I noticed the drag queens on RuPaul's Drag Race doing. I was just listening to a bunch of the music. <laughs> the music is just so bad. It's so bad. And, uh, and I was like, wow, this is really interesting because it's like, each character is both themselves and someone else, someone larger, and how kind of, kind of at the same time, and I definitely didn't get the same the idea from that, it just happened kind of all at the same time, at the time the technology was evolving, like when I got my first iPhone, when I was still with my domestic partner, and um, basically <laughs> fell in love with it to the extent that my um, friends called me Angie Phone, and that's still my handle on some stuff. So, um, yeah, I got really into this idea that the life should be documented. And apparently, I mean, no big surprise, this became a thing. And I've noticed that because, I mean, the sort of writing I do, which I'm going to, okay, here's an example. Here's one to the few out of print and copies of me on a shirt. And yeah, that's me on the cover. And, um. We don't need to talk about any other aspect of that, except you should read the book. It's still in ebook. Um, eBay does not have some copies of it. But I tend to write about my own life because I don't know anything else. When I first started writing, when I was like, I don't know, 15, 16, when I first started writing in classes for school, high school, 17, 18, the thing was, I had experienced so little of life other than growing up in like a suburban house with nice, normal, you know, parents that I didn't really have anything to write about. And the advice my writing teacher, Virgilis, gave me after I graduated from Reed was if this is what you really want to do, and it really was, go out there and live. Go out there and live life. So, of course, I moved to San Francisco and um, after a stint in office work, Oh, well, did the do that became this. Don't do drugs, kids. But if you're going to do drugs, write a book about it, go to grad school, spend seven years slaving over the thing. Then became a, then become a writer. <laughs> Just kidding. Just don't do drugs. Um, yeah. But it's gone all the way to... Angelina Casarano, my most recent novel, which is just an ebook. I'm still waiting for the paperbacks to come in from India. And um, I've had to kind of do that myself between balancing, <laughs> actually not balancing because I'm bipolar and so often don't have a really good handle on that stuff. So just kind of doing as I do and learning as I go the boundaries and the difference, but also this massive intersection between the fact that the world I write about Lena Cosentino is basically me, and um, I am her. We're like doppelgangers, you know, that whole thing. And I can only, I only do ever do write about the city I'm living in at the time and what's going on in my life. I mean, 
Yeah, I changed some details, especially in Dead So Desolate, because I was in, in an MFA program at the time, and you're supposed to do that. And that's how fiction works. You know, you change a few things later when I started writing about my family more now that I live in Reno and I'm, you know, old. It's, I've had so many people, like distant relatives come at me be like mad or upset or something. And I'm like, I'm sorry, this is just how it was for me. At least I was able to write the one book my dad liked, which uh, after about 10 of them, right through his career, he actually did like, because it was like way more about just, you know, families getting together for meals and how like bittersweet and awkward and wonderful that always is, you know? So, I totally forgot the point I was making with this. I was trying to like tie it all together to something cool. The personal and the persona and dude, um, I, <laughs> of course I watch drag queens and I'm like, I wish I looked like that, but God, I know how much work it is trying to look like that because I have drag <laughs> and slash I'm sure fat. And I love, I love their media. I have no idea if they've been judging to them wrong, but Mine is here, and it is just my world, kind of, what the hell, no. My world kind of sensationalized and sparkly, but like, real, also. So, that's all. <laughs>